sang his praises. He was one of the best directors I've ever worked with. But Glenn had a clear vision for this movie and communicated it to the people he was working with. The audience was the people you work with. They, in turn, put their full faith in him, resulting in everyone delivering quality craftsmanship all around. Speaking of quality craftsmanship, today's sponsor is Dr. Squat. Dr. Squat with their go to the using pretty kale. This is based on a true story. Like with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that's only partly true. I'll point out the true crime details later, but for now, how about backpackers are preparing for a trip across northern Australia? Ben Mitchell is an easygoing native Australian who has to secure them a shitty car from a casually sexist guy. They get, uh, really easy on that travel. Though he may not be confrontational about it, Ben's hashtag not all blokes. <laughs> doesn't keep him from having an acute love triangle with his travel partners, both tourists from the UK, the fancy-free Christy Earl and the more straight-laced Liz Hunter. They celebrate their imminent voyage with a party so hard, someone ordered a cake for it. Oh, shit, Ben, watch your head, dude. That pool is not wide enough for all that. Their good time splash around goes late into the night, and in the morning, it looks like Ben and Christy spent the night together. But they slept head to toe, so maybe there was no funny business. Liz is numb that spent the night with her shellfish lover, the ocean. Eh, still got time for a quickie before they leave. This scene was absent from Wolf Creek's theatrical release, but let me tell you, that version is hard to find. I always try to use the theatrical cuts for the kill cow, but with this movie, I had to go with the much more accessible and widespread unrated version, which is five minutes longer. The trio rendezvous at the station wagon, and one nifty rack focus later, these road warriors take off down the Fury Road. It's beautiful country, perfect for landscape shots and a road trip montage. We're talking duets in the front seat, bare feet on the dashboard, checking each other for cavities. Everything you might want in a mid-2000s sizzle reel Pepsi pitch. After they pass the Powerpuff Girls Pepsi and the yeah. Happy Giant with broken knees, Liz spots Boring. a last-ditch detour for petrol and makes a wrong turn to a rundown servo-slash-restaurant. If there were hills around, I'd bet they'd have eyes. And what harbinger of doom awaits our wayward youths? Uh -huh guy named Graham. But Graham Cracker's not the person they've got to worry about here. Inside, Liz gets leered at by men who speak about her in disgusting ways. And two Outback Santa? Ben steps in to defend her honor, but is forced to make peace, not war, when confronted by this huge jacked man. This scene helps establish how out of their element our heroes are. Should have told you he's they're good people, but outmatched in this outback. Ben wanted to stand up more for his friends, but it'd mean a likely ass beating. That sucks. They leave and are hit with an unusual Australian sprinkle. Wolf Creek was filmed over five weeks in South Australia, around the Flinders Ranges, north of Adelaide. This place was drought central and hadn't seen rain in 10 years. So imagine the filmmakers' surprise when they faced rain during 21 of their 25 shooting days. The clean was ultimately forced to rewrite. One, two. It's going to be a difficult fight because again, this is Stipe Miocic, the champion. How am I already exhausted? Stand up. The champ is actually keeping it calm and collected while the challenger wants to get the knockout.
Left, do you not realize he's going to be holding me here? to acknowledge the weather. The adaptation worked, with the change in weather matching the change in these characters' fortunes. In the end, it was yet another vibe moment. It was just, you know, it was, it was amazing. Making a problem into a um, solution. Their wet-hot Australian summer continues as they spot a sign for Wolf Creek Crater. They grab the goon and start walking to the titular landscape feature. There is a real-life Wolf Creek, but it's in Western Australia, over a thousand miles away from where they film. It's also spelled with an E, which is lacking from this movie's title. The production got some shots of the real-life crater, and it's intercut here with everything else that was filmed in South Australia. If you're like me and love how this movie looks, well, say hello to director of photography Will Gibson. Hello. Gibson brought his experience making documentaries, as well as working with both film and video, to make Wolf Creek feel simultaneously cinematic and authentic. He had to convince director McLean not to shoot on mini DV, promising that he could make HD feel just as real. McLean was happy to have had his mind changed. I'm going to become the new spokesman for High Def Worldwide because it is so cool. Liz takes off for a solo hike, and since Christy told Ben that Liz is fancy, he takes the hint and catches up to her. Ben admires the view, and also the crater, and before long, he and Liz are smooching and giggling. David Phillips was excited to play Ben, partly because of romantic moments like this one. His chemistry with both his co-stars helps add to how refreshingly likable they are. With the love triangle now simplified to a love line and unconnected love dot, the travelers regroup and discover their car is dead. Since this pack son Obi-Wan only knows how to fix land speeders, they're stuck in this broken down piece of shit car! When some mysterious lights appear on the horizon. Finally, 37 minutes into the movie, it's time for Mick Taylor to make his entrance. What the bloody hell are you all doing out here? Scared the shit out of me. <laughs> came to wreck everything and ruin their lives. God sent him. John Jarrett was McLean's first and only choice for the role, a decision he made 10 minutes after meeting him. A veteran Aussie actor who was in Picnic at Hanging Rock, Jarrett, who's been in several other Aussie horror films, loved the script and was happy to sign on for the part. Best script I think I've read. Full stop. Jarrett fully invested himself in the role, sometimes continuing to act after cuts. Dude didn't shower for six weeks so he could fully embody the character. I had to have Mick about me. Um, because John Jarrett just couldn't, couldn't get there. Mick Taylor is an old-fashioned, rugged out ways. He makes a homophobic remark when Ben says he's from Sydney. Poof, the capital of Australia. Despite the culture clash, they're forced to rely on Mick and his mechanical knowledge. He says their car is kaput, and that to fix it, they'll have to go to his workshop down the road, which in Australian could mean 100 meters or 100 kilometers. Although he's offering to help them, Taylor is immediately unnerving. He's uncomfortably aggressive, even when he's ostensibly being nice. Of course I'm not gonna charge you, you stupid bastard, hey? Okay? <laughs> Mick Taylor's mechanic moves was also the M.O. of Bradley John Murdoch, a real-life Australian killer who murdered English backpacker Peter Falconio in 2001. Murdoch's case was so similar to Wolf Creek that the Northern Territory government delayed the movie's release there so it couldn't influence the trial. They take a very long drive that gives the ladies some concern, but eventually arrive at Mick's mining camp, where the travelers have a talk about and enjoy his drink of choice. Nothing like rainwater from the top end. Mick mentions his previous job, exterminating wildlife for local farmers. He's a bit too cheery about the details. Now, pigs were different. You have to get in close, you know, get the dogs on them, and then you go in with a knife. When Mick mentions a knife, Ben can't help but worsen the cultural divide by going all in on the stereotypes and comparing Taylor to another Australian Mick. That's not a knife. This is an knife. <laughs> This Yahoo serious nice Nick responds by trying to explode him with his mind. For all the famous characters he could have pulled from, like Paul Hogan's tight. Crocodile Dundee, Jared actually based his performance on his own father. It was a outback bushy. Rotate. 
very funny. Large and wide, Larry, but he wasn't a psychopathic. Um, okay, so let's stay there. there. That's <laughs> it. Things get even more tense when Liz asks Nick about a puppy or Australian right. mascot. I'm doing big ones, so I can have a few grooves everywhere out here now. <laughs> Rip out of that. Sensing that things are going south, Liz makes sure to sincerely thank Taylor for his help. No worries. But it's guest stories for this. Falls asleep by the fire and wakes up gagged in a derby shed. This movie has suffered right, a sea change. Halfway through, we've arrived at the horn. Nice. Liz will be the first person we follow and root for. After cutting herself loose Turn with broken glass, Liz finds their lemon of a car completely Great dismantled with today. no sign of Ben or Christy anywhere. <laughs> Vive tu estrella. Estrella Jalisco. Never mind. Liz follows Christie's shrieks to a corrugated shack and peeks inside to see what Mick keeps in this awful place of awfulness. There are meat hooks, guns, a dead animal of some kind, and Christie tied up and screaming hysterically. Taylor terrorizes her and belittles her lack of gun knowledge. Well, nothing happens when the bolts are you see? <laughs> Christie's actor Kesty Morassi screams so long and so well on set that it left a lot of the crew feeling miserable. She was in hell of a zone for three, four, five days. Even editor Jason Ballantine said he couldn't handle listening to the constant screaming for days. To give himself a soul cleanse, he'd edit scenes with farts cut in. And as childish as it may be, um, fart gags are incredibly funny um, in the wee hours of the morning. And so we did um, we did get into uh, recutting some scenes with um, a few uh, yeah, farts. Or, Nick's not only into torture either, as he threatens to rape Christy with a disgusting, sadistic lead. To help her friend, Liz starts a garbage fire that lures Mick out of the shack. While he's outside, Liz sneaks inside and comes face to stump with a headless corpse. It's not a full bastard skelly yet, so I guess I have to include it on the count. When Mick comes back inside to continue torturing Christy, Liz corners him with his own hunting rifle. He tries to talk her down with an impassioned plea for gun control. Now, Lizzie. A rifle in the wrong hands can be, you know, really dangerous, so... Give him a fucking I love how Liz really tries to shoot him dead, even though she only grazes him. She even goes for the double tap, but the gun's out of ammo. Damn. Still, gotta respect the gun butts for good measure. Liz takes the keys and Christy and prepares to get the hell out of Dodge. When Mick returns with a shotgun to stop them from leaving, they scare him off while installing a new bay window in his shack. They flee nice. the crash zone, but it doesn't take long to pick the black outback before headlights appear from behind. So Liz pulls up the window and eats the truck off a cliff. The survivors hide out the cliffside until Mick leaves to mourn his whip. Christy is too traumatized to return to Mick's not-so-nice house. And stays in the Sutherland, while Liz heads back alone, hoping to find another car and maybe possibly Ben also. Mick's compound was built from the ground up in a dugout by the production design team led by Robert Webb. Webb was a local South Australian and was able to get them anything needed from his contacts, including an actual human skull. That's someone's great grandfather's skull from Central Europe. And they lent it to you. And they lent it to me. At the compound, Liz finds Mick's collection of missing persons reports. She also finds a vehicle, as well as every back passport and camera of every wanderer he's killed. I'm sure he's been meaning to post it all on eBay, but, you know, hard to find the time with all the murder. Liz rummages through the camcorders and finds one that still turns on. Looks like this family sprung for the good bad but maybe not the good rental car, since the tape shows Mick extending them familiar hospitality. Nothing like rainwater from the top end. Remember, kids, never drink gutter runoff with strangers. Liz rewinds Ben's tape for one last look at Graham, only to realize that Mick has tracked them all the way from the servo. In earlier tracks of Liz, Liz, Ben, and Christy were just three more home video victims. To fit their small budget of $1.5 million, McLean made their trip the entire movie. Ooh, no budget. No. Liz gives up on the memories and matches key to car. Against all odds, her ride of choice starts. <laughs> Unfortunately, she's got a mix hiker. A stab to her back sends her to the ground where she pulls out a pocket knife to defend herself with. But all that does is set him up for a callback. That's not a knife. <laughs> this is a knife. In what may be the cruelest moment we see from this condescending killer, he stabs into Liz's spine, severing her spinal cord and turning her into a, well, head on a stick. 
<laughs> Though she's still alive last we see her, she's reported as missing at the end of the movie, so I think it's safe to sadly say Liz and Taylor's last summer has suddenly ended. While it was faked on set using a real pig carcass, the literally unnerving head-on-a-stick move is sadly all too real. It was inspired by Ivan Milat, an Australian serial killer commonly known as the Backpack Murderer. From 1989 to 1993, he claimed seven backpackers' lives aged 19 to 22 and paralyzed some of them in this manner. He also collected their belongings, including backpacks and cameras, another detail borrowed for this film. Christie notices that Liz has been gone for a considerable chunk of the movie, so she assumes the worst and runs, hoping to get home and or away. Four beautiful shots of the sprawling outback here, which was considered a sort of fifth character in the film. It's a terrifying setting because of its desolation. The sequence is also one of many that showcases Francois Titez's score. <laughs> Clean wanted music that neither took away from nor telegraphed the terror, so Titas composed pieces that fit in with the movie's ambient horror. On a road, Christie's found by a kindly old man who's either way too late or way too early to be wearing a fuzzy bucket hat. He offers her safety and salvation, but before long, he's left trying to figure out what jerk hates his thermos can. The guy gets sniped in the eye from afar, another Samaritan killed in a horror movie. Good. Christy doesn't waste time warning and speeds off as soon as she sees Mad Mick coming in hot. The two stylo it out, and he makes good gestures because he's a real son of a bitch. But his six cylinders moves out to her spirit and a good fender, and she's able to run him off the road, causing a bit of a bingo. Her satisfaction is short-lived. Just when she thinks she's in the clear, Mick calmly pulls out his rifle and blows out her back tire, sending the car crashing on the side of the road. El Taco's Crispy Chicken Tacos are only $1.49 on the 20 under 2 menu. Hell yeah! <laughs> This car stunt was performed by Paul Lightfoot, brother of the movie's producer David Lightfoot, with her sister acting as set nurse. Are you gonna try and kill my little brother this afternoon? <laughs> Great work on the stunt, Paul. I was sad to learn that producer David Lightfoot passed away last year of a heart attack, way too young at 61. Rest in peace. When he reaches the wreckage, Mick watches Christy crawl away for a while before impassively shooting her from the hip. No more games and no more giggles from this guy. One more bullet to make sure she's dead. God damn it, this is one more shout out to the lead actresses, Kesty Morassi and Cassandra McGrath. Roles like theirs are exhausting, having to constantly act out a state of terror, but they'd often nail their takes on the first go, which McLean credits for helping get the movie shot on schedule. Also an asset in that regard was cinematographer Will Gibson, who McLean called a human dolly. Dude would do all sorts of stunt shoots, fix the vehicles and hanging off of ledges to get his shots. That's awesome, man. Mick gives Christy and the older guy a Jedi funeral. I guess that about does it for Wolf Creek. So let's get to the no- Oh shit, I forgot about Ben! This supermassive game continues by switching to our last remaining playable character. He wakes up crucified in a wing of Mick's dungeon next to another tourist who won't be seeing the sights anymore. The blood still looks wet, so I'm obligated to count it. Like I said, it's a long-standing rule to count fresh dead meat. Ben is sick of these motherfucking nails through his motherfucking wrists, so he pulls his arm off them in what I believe was the last shot filmed cars before passing out from exhaustion beyond the black stuff. He's roused from his nap by a fedora silhouette, but lucky for Ben, this time it's just a couple of German tourists. They drive him to Calvary for medical attention. The last we see him, Ben's being taken into custody on suspicions of murdering his friends. Thankfully, some text at the end says he avoided the booting sentence and was cleared of all charges. The movie ends with Mick Taylor walking into the Australian sunset, cross-dissolving his way to an eventual sequel. How many blokes got choked and Sheila's got Keela? Let's find out and get to the... Whoa! Uh, what the... Oh, fuck! Fuck! Ah, Frankie! Ah, that's all right. I'll get you in the Wolf Creek 2 to the numbers. Oh, we're not doing Wolf Creek 2 right now. Oh, bloody hell! Ah, oh, bloody hell! Five people died in Wolf Creek. Two were men and three were women, with this entire pie chart baked courtesy of Mick Taylor. You know, this exact same count and breakdown was only seen three times before in Kill Count history. Huh. 
With a runtime of 104 minutes, we had a kill on average every 20.8 minutes. I'll give the Golden Chainsaw the coolest kill to Liz. I hate that she goes through this because I really like the character, but it's hard to ignore how memorable and disturbing the head on a stick is. The Machete for Lamest kill goes to either of the two unknown bodies. I didn't even want to count them. And that's it. Wolf Creek came out in 2005 and was followed by a sequel eight years later. There are also two prequel novels co-written by McLean and two seasons of a TV series streaming on Shudder. A third film is also potentially in the works, so maybe I'll do Wolf Creek 2 when that's about to come out. For now, I'm moving on to the Child's Play recounts. Until then, I'm James A. Janice. This has been the Kill Count. Well, the next Kill Count. And now, a very important good guy message just for you. Hey, little beanies, in less than three days, we're starting our recount of the Jackie movie. <laughs> That's right, all seven movies and the TV show just in time for the new season. Aren't you excited? Yeah. Now let's get to the fucking trailer, you nightmare fueled mascot thing. Child's Play is the film that made Chucky a household name. His real name is Charles Lee Ray. Sure, but to everyone else, he's Chucky. 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 Not just any doll. This one's possessed by a serial killer who hunts a kid that loves killer cereal. This looks just excellent. So put on your best good guy PJs. What do you think? Then watch Child's Play. And on Sunday, tune in for the Kill Count Recount. Only on Dead Meat. I saw this one. Child's Play can currently be watched on the featured streaming platform. Steady always recommends you watch the movie for yourself before it's Kill Count. It's the only way to have your own properly informed opinion. Kill Counts are never meant to replace the experience of watching a film. Thanks a lot for watching this Kill Count. Sorry for the schedule change. I was originally going to cover Wolf Creek 2 right away, but some family stuff came up and I'm actually in Michigan as this video is released, so I had to record a bunch of stuff earlier and then ship some episodes around. Sorry, hope to get to it someday. Also, I think I got a good streak going, don't I? I want to thank some patrons like Danny, Papa Steve, Anthony Motino, Colin Karikis, Aaron Von Nutsack, Eric Kennedy, Bo Evans, and Nicholas Wong. Thanks, everyone. Last 10. Good people. Earlier this year, we became owners of a football club, be it Rex. I go. feel like I know those people. I grew up with those people. What they were looking for was just a little shot in the arm. FX. Welcome to Rex and Tribunes, August 24th on FX. Speed on. We taste nice our job. fries, make them hot and crispy every single time. That's right. And every single Good time, job, Toby insists we try fries. That's right. That's right. High fries. It'll catch up, right? Try Wendy's hot and crispy fries. Preferred almost two to one over McDonald's. Mm. Oh, buddy. Oh, fuck yeah, Toilet Bonnie's in this? Hell yeah! <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna go far right, and then we're gonna juke left. You'll never see it coming. The juke of a lifetime. Standing straight up. We caught a little bit lacking. This is cake. Ah, <sighs> oh, not cake. Get out of here, dude! We caught a little bit lacking. This is King. Something like coming up next, it's a heavyweight showcase between world class striker Alistair, the Reem Overeem, and I want to fight with you. Welcome.
It's one of the devlogs for Punch a Bunch. It's my very first game I'm making, and this series is sort of documenting my journey. It's very first game. Last episode, I created a bunch of bosses for games, and I want to make sure that it's really rewarding to the players who actually defeat these bosses. So this time, I want to focus on creating a bunch of fun collectibles that you can unlock by, you know, defeating bosses, unlocking specific achievements, and maybe finding some hidden secrets in the game. That's something that I really enjoy when I play other people's games. So I think it's important to Try to add things that you love about other games into your own games. I've gotten a lot of work done over the past couple of months, and I'm really excited to show you the updates. I hope you enjoy the video. Let's dive right in. Hello. It's here. Nice. I will open that and I will You mean we're just battling for nothing? The next thing on my to-do list is creating a proper menu system. Okay, so we have the main menu screen, but apart from that, we don't have anything. Meaning we don't have any options, there's no way to get in or out of the game, there's no way to launch your career, create a profile, select which opponent you want to fight against, basically nothing. And that's the problem. <laughs> now, a menu isn't the most fun part about making a game, but unfortunately, every game has to have one. Now, I thought a menu... <laughs> easy. That's gonna take like what, a week max? You know, I don't like to think ahead, so why don't I just give myself two weeks? You know, that's double what I thought it would take, just to give myself a bit of a buffer. <sighs> yeah. Not quite. I started off creating this uh, diagram of every single menu that absolutely has to be in the game, just so that I can get a good overview of what needs to be done. I'm anticipating the character customization to be by far the most difficult part of this whole menu, so that's where I want to start. If I can do this, the rest should come pretty easy, I'm hoping. <laughs> what I'm talking about here is the menu where you can customize your character and change out hats, gloves, colors, and all that fun stuff. Now, I already started work on this, like, way back. It looks bad, it doesn't really work very well, very hacky and not very modular, so I'm definitely gonna have to start over. The first thing I want to do is to just come up with what this screen should ultimately look like. My wife has been playing a lot of Animal Crossing lately, and I've noticed that the interface is really, really clean, simple, readable. I really, really like it, and I think that something like this could definitely work in Punch a Bunch. It's perhaps a little bit too cartoony, but I think it's a really great place to start, and to do this in Unreal Engine is hugely time consuming and it's going to be a waste of time. So I'm just going to move over to Photoshop and try to come up with a design that I like and then we're going to try to move that over and implement it in Unreal Engine. It's going to be way quicker, more fun and just easier <laughs> overall. In the end I came up with something like this which I think is pretty good. I'm definitely scared of implementing this in Unreal Engine. I don't know if I'll be able to even do this but luckily we did all of this during a live stream and some of you were super 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 helpful and I could not have done this without you. After I finally got this menu to actually work so that you can swap items out, click on buttons, switch categories, I started working on actually bringing what we did in the Photoshop document into this menu. Oh boy, it took a long time. Uh, those TV shows Anyway, so now that we have the system in place, I only see one thing missing, and it's more unlockables. So I think it's time we create some collectible items, which is really what you clicked on this video in the first place. Yeah. something that I feel really familiar with. I had a blast making these items, texturing them, and coming up with ideas. I also started working on some belts. I figured when you win a championship, you should win a belt, like in real boxing, right? And I want it to be a really satisfying experience. So I wanted to spend a bit of extra time really making these belts look cool. Although the amateur series belts obviously need to look less cool than the one you get for beating more difficult ones. So there's got to be a bit of a balance. <laughs> Thank you. 
This seems like Adam's power by him just left him. exceeds my expectation. So when you beat the amateur series, you'll be rewarded with your victory belt, which looks like this. I definitely want it to look good, but like I mentioned before, I don't want it to look too good. So I feel like I found a fairly good belt with this one. And so then when you beat the intermediate series, you'll get this belt, which is a little bigger, has a little bit more details on it. At least personally, I feel like it looks quite a bit better than the first belt. And then when you beat the Proceeds, you'll be awarded with this Onyx belt, and this one looks super cool, at least, I think. It's a lot bigger, and just feels overall more champion-esque, if that's a word. And then, because I thought it looked cool, I also made this white version of this belt because I thought it looked cool. I don't know, I think it is some sort of special award if you beat the Pro Series in a certain amount of time, or without taking help, or, you know, something like that. I probably have to go back and do a special belt for all the series now. Anyways, I'm really happy with them. I think it looks really cool. I've got a ton of other items as well. Made a lot of hats. Got the banana hat, sort of emperor crown. Got a karate belt. And one of my favorites is this pirate hat. I really like it. It turned out great. Uh, so I made a whole set for this one, so you can get the eye patch and the belt and be a full pirate. I'm probably also gonna have a wooden mic because I think that could be really funny. I just haven't had time to do it yet. But it's got it's got Ninja Turtle stuff. And, you know, I like to go skiing, so standard shades. And if you want to become Harry Potter, you can become Harry Potter. Or the Monopoly guy. Anyways, you guys get the idea. But I think you can really come up with some really fun combinations here. And that's really the point. I want you to, be able to make your character feel like your own. So leave a comment with some items that you want to see in the game down below. Baby, it's also really good for that algorithm juice, if you know what I mean. One thing that I still need to that work on are making more shorts. I only have these three, and I mean, it's really just textures, so definitely something that's on the to-do list. I had so much fun making these, it's so great, and it's pretty quick too, actually. And for the three people wondering how I created these icons, well, let me show you. I'm actually really proud of this system, uh, so uh, I'm gonna show it to you. So first I was thinking, like, okay, how do I make these icons? Do I need to render them in Blender, and then create a Photoshop file and you know blah 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 but no no it's much better than that so I've created this scene in Unreal Engine where we can put this item and I can adjust the lighting a little bit to fit the item well and then all I gotta do is just export a screen grab and ta -da, I get a nice little icon I'm really happy that I'm able to actually get it from Unreal Engine because it really makes it look exactly like the actual item if you render it in Blender it's just not gonna look right Just a couple of menus left. I wanted to continue working on the career menu and just finish that whole portion up. I had learned so much creating that character customization screen that I felt pretty confident moving forward with the rest of the menus. I came up with something like this with just a simple clean menu hovering in the air with a 3D thing in the background. I was going to do something fun with the pegboard here, put something on it, but in the end I decided to just get rid of it. It was confusing and I think it just makes more sense without it. It might seem simple to create a menu, it's just a few buttons here and there that you click on, but it's actually a lot more complicated than I expected. Just getting everything to work, loading the right things into the game, it's just, it's not crazy difficult, but it's just 
more work than I thought. So this is where you would choose what championship to join. You click on the thing you want to join, and it'll take you to the screen where it shows you the next opponent. Then we're gonna put some text here on the left and some fun image. I don't really know what yet, but we'll come up with something. Once you're beating your opponent, it'll take you back to the next opponent screen and display the next opponent. And I think that's pretty cool. It's super modular. It's all automatic. I don't have to do anything manual. So all I gotta do now is just create more championships. Obviously, I want to add some cutscenes. in between and make things a little bit more fun but I think for now this is really really good and it provides a great foundation for me to just add some of that niceness to it. Something's going on with Esther. Who are you? The mother. Bruce Buffer. He's 24 years old. LTI. Ready? You ready? Let's go fight. Here we go. Our fight tonight is scheduled for three. Five minutes. White Sharks for the game. Black Troops for the Diablo. John, this is the man of the day. You can earn it. Thank you so much.
So now I can just download whatever animation I want, pop in the show here, and I can stop and I'm on it. So now I'm not scared about making it for it. I just have it all in here. So I can click on your next project and do it for animations. I feel really good about this. I think it's really good to get a well. I like the way it's going to the animation. It's really, really helps a lot. I like the card color yellow. It has a nice contrast to the background, but I might change it. I'm, I'm not quite sure yet. What do you think? I'm not sure what you think. I'm going to celebrate. I also set up this simple options menu, it doesn't have a lot of it yet, but it's super simple for me to add more options, and it saves everything you do to your local save file, so everything is stored, and that includes everything else as well, actually, your costumes and all that stuff. I also set up a profile system so that many people can play the game on the same device. Nothing about these things were super complicated, I felt pretty confident setting all these things up, but again, it just takes so much time just figuring things out, and it's so easy to get stuck on a tiny little thing that ends up taking a whole day, but so far things have been pretty smooth with the length of the menu, I gotta say. I still need to make sure that the main menu fits more into the university creative the career menu, but I'm not feel too stressed out about that. I knew we would get it to the right, and it is functionally working, and that's all I really care about right now. And I do feel like we have bigger fish to fry. The game was pretty hard to play, and it desperately needs some sort of tutorial or training. So that is going to be the next of my to-do lists. Creating a fun, engaging way for a player to actually learn how to play the game properly. Thanks so much for watching the video, I really appreciate it. If you haven't watched the set beginning on Steam yet, then please go ahead and These celebrities are sitting on a secret. You have all seen the celebrity track race for all the Feel the difference. I set a challenge for myself. Can I remake my YouTube intro into the software? Let's get a shot. Hey guys, this is Nick Pizzola. Today I'm just here to talk about how I remake my YouTube opening for the second time. Meaning that there's three versions of this thing. I kind of had an idea of what well, we got was third version. It's a heavyweight one. It's between El Diablo and set, Alistair, the Green and Wolverine. Minimalistic, simple, all that jazz. But one thing I want to try is to make it all easy. The man realized that his mother was not a woman. Hey there, Mason, what's up? Who the hell are you? I'm in your Twitch chat. I have a great video idea for you. Alright, let's hear it. Day shift at Freddy. Isn't that like a FNAF game? Yeah, and it's great. Instead of your thing off like six years ago, it's Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. What? Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. Okay, now who the hell are you? Hey there, Gold Sport. How about you get your lazy ass off that soap and help me out with something? I don't think I want to do that. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, uh, wait, what? Uh, 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 I really cannot do this. Get the back. 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 And so do I. A full commitment's what I'm thinking of. You wouldn't get this from any other guy. I just want to tell you how I'm feeling. Try to make you understand. Never. Uh, I hate that he has like Banjo Kazooie Undertale voice where it's like, uh, uh, but it's literally just like, hello, hello, hello. I hate it already. Hello, hello, welcome to the new and improved Freddy's. Well, actually, it's not new or improved. Leave me alone. There's like 50 locations. They can't all be new and improved. Welcome to your new summer job at Freddy Fazbender's Pizza. Oh, this is gonna be hell. Great to be here. 
what year is it? Can I yiff the robots, or what's the pay like? I found out earlier what yiff means. If you want the fastest ending, find Foxy as fast as possible and yiff him. What does yiff mean? I've heard that term before, but I don't know what that means. What, what does it mean to yiff someone? Search up yiff. Okay, let me get my phone. Oh, there's a video. Okay. I've never been to this website before. <laughs> I now know what yif is. I don't think I want to do that to Foxy. So let's go, can I yif the robots? Do not yif the robots. We had to uh, let a lot of employees go. So that's a common thing. Fair warning, Cap, this one's... How did the game not pause? No, I have not put in the disc yet. I'm not gonna lie to you, this video is gonna be a little bit sussy. They're gonna make jokes like this, I'm gonna make jokes like this, okay? We pay our workers exclusively in tokens. I want cash. Well, I wanna see my family again. <laughs> Drinks don't always come true. This is the show stage. Here you can perform with the robots in your suit and help maintain the robots. I hope you're a good performer. Please don't bring up what happened in Arizona to the customers, please. To think Foxy was thrown into the Grand Canyon. This is the arcade. Com customers can play Red Bear, which is an arcade design, arcade game designed by the company. If you win, you get tokens. One of the games, Happiest Day, I think it's called, is broken. If you feel like you can repair it, go pick, a, go pick up a wrench from the prize counter and fix it up. This is the new improved Pirate's Cove. We made it super kid friendly by adding a help. Tap water. A go? Oh, because. Help you salad bar. Can I yiff the fox? Uh, Do uh, not yiff the fox. I had to fire three people this year just for that. Why do you people want to do that anyway? He's broken and smells weird and rugged and handsome. And... <laughs> Bro, what the... Why do you guys have me play? What is this? This is the restroom corridor. It's where you... We have our restrooms, obviously, you idiot. We also have a room here called our safe room. It's a secret room at the end of the corridor where the customers aren't allowed to enter or see inside. You can save your game there. It's wise to save often. Freddy's isn't always as safe as it needs to be. Go there anytime you find yourself injured. You'll know what it means when it happens to you. When, when what? When what happens to me? That room is where you suit up. You gotta wear a mascot suit. I left a uh, tape. Uh, listen to it. Oh, uh, which character is in the suit? Bonnie, Freddy, Foxy? God, our main character loves Foxy. No. We had to get rid of the Foxy one. Too many incidents. See, we have two currently available. We used to have a bear suit and a rat suit. But those two were thrown in the bin for smelling like slaughtered toddlers. Anyway, we have two replacement suits. Don't question that. They were they were gotten on short notice, so they may not be 100 percent appropriate. What is happening? This is the office hallway. There's two rooms here. To the right our security office, and show you inside there in a minute. There's also a locker room to the left of the security office. Go in there and you're fired. We have something locked in there. You ready? What's locked in? This is around. Yes, it is. We can't let the public know he's still here. Bad publicity and whatnot. Not after the incident in Reno. Before I hire you, I can ask you a few questions. Uh, what's your name? I'm Keith. Oh, thanks for that. Uh, any past and crime-related activity? Uh, indirectly caused World War One and World War II. I killed kids in mascot costumes. I'm gonna pass on that one. I yiffed Foxy the old no. No, because if we tell him that, that means that we won't get the chance to. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking, oh man, I'm clean as a Freddy Fazbear. Yeah. I'm gonna say I kill kids. Uh, oh, nothing serious uh, then. Uh, you gotta sign this piece of paper. Nothing too intimidating. <laughs> Contact my trade union. Be sure it's safe. I wanna know what's on it first. I'll sign it. Sure thing. Oh, you poor fool. Now the business stuff is over. Have to go over what you gotta do today. Your job is to wear one of our magnificent Springlock suits and go entertain the kids. Giving cake out and serving pizza to get you bonus tokens. Uh, so I get to be one of the characters? Yep, isn't that neat? No strings attached, just definitely Springlock. Oh, 
off. You can only take off the suit in the safe safe room. You wouldn't want to ruin the magic for the kiddos. Never take the suit off outside of that room, especially under heavy blood loss. See ya. Uh, remember the company motto. Sweep it under the rug. It's probably fine. <laughs> inspect Freddy. Inspect Bonnie. Inspect Chica. Inspect curtains. Inspect the curtains. The curtains are fine. What a fucking waste of half an hour. Oh, okay. Um, let's inspect... Let's inspect Freddy. I'm gonna talk to Freddy. Get away from Weak music box. Play Darude Sandstorm. And get away from the orange chair. Weak music box. Play Darude Sandstorm. Uh, let's inspect Chica, if you know what I mean. Devour Chica's bird ass? I'm not showing- Oh, I'm actually doing- What the hell are you doing there? Yes, Dad. What the hell are you doing there? What the hell are you doing? I got fired? <laughs> if you're gonna give me the option, I gotta see it. This is where the prize area is. Hey, it's me. I'm Matt. I work at the prize court. Hi, Matt! Hi, Matt! I'm broken, and I'll give you prizes. Awesome! Thank you, Matt. Nice to meet you, Matt. Uh, let's play Bread Bear. Smash the robots? I don't know. Smash the Freddy's? Gigantic hook! I got the win. So I just, I'm so confused about the trolls. Oh, okay, I got it. I got it. Oh, Golden Freddy. This is the shot that drops him. Perfect technique. He's clearly hurt badly here. Let's take a look at it from another angle. Of course, it's terrifying when a guy who weighs 265 pounds and is 6 foot 6 can jump that high to need someone in the head. No good. Let me through Foxy, let me through. Warning, game coming, boss. Oh. oh no. Oh god. You are win! Woo! You won! You won 109 tokens. That was worth. That was worth. Uh, what is Foxy Yiskiff and why is it a game? Oh my goodness. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Let's go. Let's go to the safe. Go to the safe, friend. Oh god. Oh. Hey, purple. I, I, I sure am, purple guy. It's nice. Um, I love it here. It's magical. Wait, what do you mean? Uh, why is that? Okay. I want to leave this plane, but the company has burned my knee, so I can't turn my back on it. Fair enough. You're okay. a clean slave. Oh, I am a clean slave. Now I need to take a little watch and to do some dirty work. If you do this for me, go be it. Nice. Whatever it is, 
know your ambiance music is creepy? Keep talking. Just hear me out, kid. Keep talking. Back in the day, I was kind of pretty. Y'all found it through time by murdering some toddlers in the soup. The place was quickly shut down. I'm being watched. So I ran a knife get my hands dirty. You know, blood. She wouldn't suspect you of my dad. Oh, once you want to go. Let's say, fine. Back here. Kill me. Yeah. I don't know if I like that. Chat, what do you think? Do we do it? Should we work towards that? Do it, don't, hold a bolt. That way it's not on my hands, it's on Chat's hands. Alright? Yes, said yes. Sure, why the heck not? Thanks. Mm -hmm. Who will find back here and maybe I'll do it? Find the kids fine for forming in that soup. Good luck. Isn't this, what's the name of this guy? Like Cool Cat or something? Quick, compress the spring lock before there's a failure. Okay. And. The spring locks are all in place. Congrats! You don't, you won't die at this moment in time. Let's go to the front. Let's go into the main room. You didn't save? Shadow Dogger! So mysterious, such good lore. I wonder what his backstory is. Where'd we go? We'll perform in soon. Lure, but badly. Cake? No. You kids like cake? I love cake. Oh, you gave you gave names to the children we're gonna have to kill. Me, me in the grown-ups room. Yo, bitches, there'd be a party in the safe room. I'll see you back. Okay, that's two kids. Uh, perform. Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot. A small crowd. How shall you entertain the crowd? Uh, do a flip? I don't think that's a good idea. I think. Oh, well, I gotta find out. <laughs> Entertain. I'm going to interact with the kids as Cool Cat. Hey kids, it's me, Cool Cat. Um, you should smoke, kids. Cool Cat says it's cool. You should. Um, you should smoke, kids. Cool Cat says it's cool. Did you just tell the kids to smoke? What's wrong with you? Uh, uh, Employee, my office, now. Uh-huh. Kids, don't uh, let him take me! Uh, Employee, this is your last warning. Come with me. Okay. The champion headed to the That's cage fine. right now is in the groove. He is in his prime right now. I got fired for that? Oh, come on. For telling kids to smoke a little, a little marijuana or a little shiggy. Shouldn't have to get fired for that. Are you serious? Shift ends at 6 p.m. Yay! At 6 p.m. arise, you take a you take a last look at the five small corpses. Was killing five kids really worth it just to shut down a shitty pizzeria? Either way, what's done is done. Say goodbye to your new friend and leave. Tomorrow is another day. Put party hats on the corpses. Mickey, this is the rat. Do not touch the rat. Do not attempt to make love to the rat. Thanks for understanding, phone guy. Prayer and Pirate Cove! Yay! Uh, you came back! Most people don't come back. We still find them, though. Um, that's incredibly disturbing. It's part of the contract here. Uh, the one you signed when you got the job? You don't miss days. You don't wait. Uh, we all signed uh, it, even me. I've been here for about 15 years. I haven't even seen my own house for about a decade. 
by the way, I talked to a few parents about around the pizzeria and uh you might have heard lately. Spill the beans, man. Sounds uh, intense. Yeah, it is. All that paperwork. Our job for today is to wear that dumb suit. You know, the one, that cat thing. Don't mention anything to customers either. We don't want any boom. Join your favorite creators. Yeah! I actually caught wait. Whoa! I like that. In a live gaming event, unlike any other. Dongery in the sustain. Uh, what is that? Uh, mean? I, I've never heard that before. Also, for Foxy's sake, listen to the darn tape I left for. Gotcha, Chief. Uh, Ruby. Uh, you see a shaded figure in the distance. He beckons you to follow him towards the safe room. Is that the man from last night? The man in purple? Hey, what's up? What's up, purple guy? Nope. I sure as heck did. We don't need the chip to deal. I need your help moving body. Oh, sure, I can do that. Help him or refuse. I'll help him. Take the bodies from here. One by one, and then dump them in the dumpster outside. The front door is through the prize order. Good luck. Well, let's put on the suit. We were told to put on the suit. I should have listened to the new tape. I didn't listen to the new tape. Hopefully, there's nothing we need to know here. Today's lesson, we're going to tell you all about how Springlock suits have been banned. One of you knuckleheads strangled some kitties while wearing a suit, so now nobody gets to wear a suit. Good job. Just to be clear, the suits are not to be touched, activated, worn. I'm wearing one right now. Uh, take off the suit. Take off the suit. Okay, good. Now collect the two bodies, and then uh, we're going to... Hey, employee! Are you wear why aren't you wearing your suit? Look, I know Springlock suits are scary. In fact, I... What on earth are you holding behind your back? Um, a cute doggo child's corpse. I don't know anymore. Uh, what? You scare me sometimes. Go suit up, please. You, you just told me not to suit up. He just told me not to suit up. Literally, the tape that he told me to listen to told me not to suit up. Well, this is scenic. Dispose of the bodies. What's up? You're the one fucking free. Thanks. The evidence is mostly gone. I'm satisfied with how you helped me today. Oh, boy. Let's get ourselves an early pay off. The goal is dead, kid. Old face should be known as you and me, kid. We'll go far. Don't worry about the last body. Oh, boy. I'll do that one myself. What's he going to do with it? I have the perfect hiding place for that one. You say goodbye to phone guy and leave. You see purple guy lingering in the doorway. You, team, you two seem to be getting closer. Wonder what he has planned for, for tomorrow. Leave through the window. Not the door. You leave through the window and head home. Tomorrow's another day. What? Playing right now. Get the bodies from the dumpster outside. Put them into the robots. You want me to do what now? What is this song? What is this song? Is it it's stuck in the middle? That's right. Stuck in the middle with you. Oh. Okay. Welcome back, employee. I hope you're ready to work hard today. Uh, I sure am, Chief. Radical. So, uh, just to update you, uh, there's been some... Uh, Unfit. Yeah, that's what you told me in the tape yesterday, and then you yelled at me to put the suit on. I repeat, the classic suits are not to be touched, activated, or worn. That being said, we are free of liabilities to do as so you wish. Okay, so for your job today, just watch the plays. Make sure the
I'm gonna go ahead and now watch. I will play the new Madden. <laughs> 